Welcome back Chemistry Stud Muffins. Today we're going to be working in the lab. We're going to learn about a technique that's often used in analytical chemistry. It's called a titration. The purpose of a titration is to find out the unknown concentration of an acidic solution. We're going to be working with an acid, which is hydrochloric acid, and a base, sodium hydroxide. Let's look at the equation involving those two chemicals. In this chemical equation, we are working with something called a neutralization reaction. In a neutralization, an acid chemically reacts with a base to produce water as one of the products and something that we call a salt, which is generally an ionic compound that dissolves in the water. But let's get down to the nitty gritty. What's really important here? We have learned so far that when you're working with an acidic solution, what makes an acid an acid is the presence of a hydrogen ion, H plus 1. We also know that that's the same thing as a proton. If you're working with a base, we are looking at the OH minus ion. When we put these two things together, the H plus 1, or hydrogen ion, interacts with the hydroxide ion, to produce water. Now in this chemical reaction that we're doing today, we're going to be putting some hydrochloric acid in an Erlenmeyer flask. We are not going to know the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. But since it's an acidic solution, we do know that there are many, many hydrogen ions floating around in the water. Let's use these pink magnets to represent the hydrogen ions. In a moment, I'm going to show you a piece of glassware called a burette. We're going to be putting the sodium hydroxide in the burette. When the sodium hydroxide is slowly added to the hydrochloric acid, we're going to see the neutralization reaction that you see up above. In other words, the hydrogen ions are going to react with the hydroxide ions in order to produce water molecules. So let's start adding our hydroxide ions to the picture. If we slowly add hydroxide ions to the acidic solution, the hydroxide should combine with the hydrogen ion to make a water molecule. Now we begin adding more hydroxide. Here comes another OH minus one ion. It's going to attached to the hydrogen ion and now we've got another water molecule. This process keeps going, adding more base, until finally we have exactly the same number of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. At that point when the moles of H plus 1 equal the moles of OH minus 1, we have reached what's called the equivalence point. The moles of hydrogen ion and the moles of hydroxide ion are identical. We have neutralized all of the hydrogen ions that were floating around in the water. In a titration, what generally happens is the molarity of the acid is unknown. And it's our job to figure out the unknown concentration. So what things do we have to work with? Well, like I mentioned, in the burette, we're going to be putting some sodium hydroxide. We will know the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. In chemistry, that's called a standard solution. It's a solution of known concentration. In this experiment, the molarity of the sodium hydroxide is 0.37 molar. We're going to start off with an Erlenmeyer flask that contains 25.0 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. We're then going to slowly add the sodium hydroxide to it in order to do the neutralization that we just talked about. 
at some point in time we will have added enough base to neutralize all of the hydrogen ions. Once we reach the equivalence point, all of the hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions have turned into water. How will we know that the titration is over? The secret is we need to add an acid base indicator to our hydrochloric acid. We're going to visually see a color change when the pH changes. In the example that I just showed you, all of the hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions were combined to make water molecules. We didn't have an excess of H plus 1 and we didn't have an excess of OH minus 1. Therefore, our pH should be neutral, right at a pH of 7. Unfortunately, we need a visual indication that the titration is over and that all the hydrogen ions have been neutralized. So we're going to add an indicator. It's called phenolphthalein. When phenolphthalein is added to a solution that is acidic, it remains clear in color. It also remains clear when the pH is 7. However, if the pH rises to 8 or above, the phenolphthalein changes to a hot pink, bright magenta color. And it's very easy for our eyes to pick up. So what we're going to do is we're going to add enough hydroxide to neutralize all the hydrogen ions. And then we're going to add just a little tiny bit more. I'm talking just half a drop of sodium hydroxide. And that little bit of sodium hydroxide that is added is going to give us a tiny excess of OH minus 1. And when that tiny excess of OH minus 1 is picked up by the phenolphthalein, it's going to show us visually a hot pink color. When we see the pink color, that's called the end point. That's when we stop the titration. After that, we're going to have enough information to do a calculation. We're going to be able to use the molarity of the standard sodium hydroxide solution and the volume of the sodium hydroxide solution that we got from the burette and also the volume of the hydrochloric acid to help us figure out what was the unknown molarity of the hydrochloric acid that we started with. Let's take a closer look at the titration in the lab. Let's make sure we have everything we need for this titration. You'll notice on the left we have our standard sodium hydroxide solution with a molarity of 0.37 molar. To the right we have our hydrochloric acid solution and again we do not know the molarity of this solution. We're also going to need a few drops of phenolphthalein indicator so we know when the titration has been completed. And this is our burette. A burette is a piece of glassware that is very skinny and long. It has a lot of little increments on there to help you figure out the volume accurately. Down at the bottom, we see what's called a stopcock. When the stopcock is horizontal, it means that liquid will not flow out of the burette. When the stopcock is turned vertically, liquid will flow from the burette. Right now, we're going to prepare our burette for the titration. The first thing that you want to do with a burette is clean it with some deionized water. You never know who's been doing an experiment with the burette before you used it, so you always want to clean it carefully. There's one small problem with cleaning the burette with water. If you look carefully at the inside of the burette, there are water molecules clinging to the glass. We're about to add our sodium hydroxide to this burette. When the base touches the water, it's going to dilute our molarity of sodium hydroxide. There's a step that we can take to ensure that the sodium hydroxide does not get diluted. We're going to take a small amount of sodium hydroxide and add it to the burette. The sodium hydroxide is going to coat the inside of the burette and replace the water molecules that are sticking to the sides of the glass. What we do now is called rolling the burette. 
With a little bit of sodium hydroxide inside the burette, we're going to slowly roll the burette to allow some of the sodium hydroxide to coat the inside. We're also attempting to get all of those water molecules to be replaced by sodium hydroxide particles. After we've rolled the burette with sodium hydroxide several times, we're then going to pour the sodium hydroxide out into the sink because we no longer need it. We're now going to fill the burette up with fresh sodium hydroxide. The burette is now completely filled with sodium hydroxide. There's one more step that we should take before we begin. Sometimes a small bubble is trapped in the small glass piece that connects to the burette. We want to make sure we get rid of that bubble before we begin to make sure it doesn't affect our volume measurements. So I'm simply going to put a small beaker underneath the burette and release a few milliliters of sodium hydroxide and now we are ready to begin. If you've never worked with a burette before it takes a little bit of time to get used to how the volumes are read. You see when the burette is completely filled up to the top the volume reads 0, 0.0. The numbers increase as you go down Right now, our burette is reading 1.50 milliliters. What a burette does for you is it measures how much volume of liquid has left the burette rather than the volume of liquid in the burette. Our initial volume is going to read 1.50 milliliters, and that's something that we should record right away. 25.0 milliliters of hydrochloric acid has been carefully measured into a graduated cylinder. We're going to pour this hydrochloric acid into an Erlenmeyer flask. We're also going to add three drops of our indicator phenolphthalein to the hydrochloric acid. Right now you'll notice that the acid is clear. Phenolphthalein is clear in the presence of an acid. The hydrochloric acid is ready to go. I'm now going to turn the stopcock until it's vertical. When I do so, sodium hydroxide base is slowly being added to our hydrochloric acid. The hydroxide ions are neutralizing the hydrogen ions and creating water. If you look very carefully, you'll see flashes of pink in the Erlenmeyer flask. That is because where the base is hitting, there's a region of hydroxide ions. I'm going to stop the flow of the sodium hydroxide for a minute and give the Erlenmeyer flask a nice swirl. And as the titration goes on, the presence of that pink color becomes more predominant. You can tell that we are getting closer to neutralization. As you get closer to that point, you want to slow down. Remember, at the equivalence point, the hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions are equal to each other. What we're trying to accomplish is going one drop beyond the equivalence point to what we call the end point. The end point is where our eyes can visually pick up the color of the pink solution. When the solution remains light, light pink, just the lightest shade of pink possible, that means that we have reached a pH of 8. You can tell that I'm getting very close, so I'm going to go drop by drop. And look at that really, really light shade of pink. And you can visually tell that we have reached the end point. The color of pink 
is definitely a hot pink magenta color. Ideally, we'd like to be maybe a slight shade of pink lighter than this. It takes some really great technique to pull that off. Even one little drop of base is going to force the pH higher than 8. But we have definitely at this point reached our end point. The last thing that we need to do in terms of collecting data is to read the final volume on the burette. If you look at the burette carefully, you can see that it reads 20.20 milliliters. Based on the titration that we just did in the lab, we're going to perform a few calculations to help us figure out the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. The first thing you want to do is keep track of the data that you've collected in the lab. One of the things that we knew from the beginning was that the molarity of the standard solution of sodium hydroxide was 0.37 molar. When we first started the titration, we read the volume of sodium hydroxide in the burette. It read 1.50 milliliters. After the titration was complete, we read the volume of sodium hydroxide again. On the burette, it read 20.20 milliliters. The last piece of data was the volume of hydrochloric acid that we measured out in a graduated cylinder and put in the Erlenmeyer flask. We used 25.0 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. Based on this data, we can figure out something that's pretty important. We need to know what volume of sodium hydroxide was used to neutralize the hydrochloric acid. If we take the final volume of sodium hydroxide from the burette and we subtract the initial volume of sodium hydroxide, we can determine what volume of sodium hydroxide left the burette in order to neutralize the hydrochloric acid. We can take the final volume of 20.20 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, let's subtract the original volume of 1.50 milliliters, and that helps us determine that we used 18.7 milliliters of sodium hydroxide in this titration. This was the volume of sodium hydroxide that we needed to completely neutralize the hydrochloric acid in the Erlenmeyer flask. Now it's time to calculate the unknown concentration of the hydrochloric acid. It's important to know the balanced equation for this neutralization reaction. When hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide, we produce two products in this neutralization reaction. We create sodium chloride, in the aqueous state, and of course, water molecules will be created when the hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions meet up. On the left-hand side, let's keep track of everything we know about the base. We know that the molarity of the base was 0.37 molar. That was our standard solution. The volume of sodium hydroxide that came out of the burette was 18.7 milliliters. Doing some quick factor label math, we can convert the milliliters to liters. There are a thousand milliliters in one liter, therefore the volume of sodium hydroxide that we used is 0 0.0187 liters. On the right hand side of the page, let's write down everything we know about the acid. Of course, we didn't know the molarity of the hydrochloric acid. That's the purpose of the titration, to find out the concentration of the HCl. We did know that 25 milliliters of hydrochloric acid was put in an Erlenmeyer flask. We can quickly convert that to liters using the fact that one liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters. We're going to use a style of math called factor label. Let's start off with our volume of sodium hydroxide that came out of the burette. We used 0 0.0187 liters of sodium hydroxide in this titration. The next factor that we're going to use is the molarity of sodium hydroxide. The molarity was 0.37 molar. We can write 0.37 molar in a slightly different way in order to cancel our units. 0.37 molar means, by definition, that 0.37 moles of sodium hydroxide are dissolved in every one liter of sodium hydroxide solution. By using factor label, 
our liters of sodium hydroxide cancel out, and we're now left with our moles of sodium hydroxide. In our next step, we're going to convert our moles of sodium hydroxide to moles of hydrochloric acid. Looking up at the balanced equation, you will notice that the coefficients read 1, 1, 1, 1 as we go across. What that tells us is that for every one mole of sodium hydroxide, one mole of hydrochloric acid will be neutralized. We can create a mole-to-mole -mole ratio out of the coefficients. By canceling our units, you'll notice that this will leave us with our moles of hydrochloric acid that were neutralized in this chemical reaction. If we stop right here, we can calculate our moles of HCl to be 0 0.00692. There's an important equation that you may have learned in chemistry so far that relates to molarity. By definition, molarity can be described as moles of solute divided by liters of solution. That means if we take our moles of hydrochloric acid that were neutralized in this reaction and we divide by the liters of hydrochloric acid that we used in this chemical reaction, we can find out the molarity of the HCl. So our moles are 0 0.00692. Let's divide that by the volume of HCl that we put in the Erlenmeyer flask. And when we calculate, we find out that the molarity of the hydrochloric acid used in this titration is 0.28 molar. We have now determined the concentration of the hydrochloric acid that was used in this experiment. I'd like you to look back at our math for a moment. When we were doing this factor label style math, you'll notice that we stopped when we got to moles of hydrochloric acid. As you get more experienced with factor label, you may realize that we could have kept going with this calculation and we never really needed to stop, find our moles, and then divide by our liters of HCl. Watch as I add to the end of this factor label problem the volume of the hydrochloric acid. By writing our math out in this way, we can accomplish the same thing as the calculation down below. Essentially, we are still taking our moles of HCl and we are dividing by our liters of HCl solution. And this still gives us an answer of 0.28 molar HCl. Let's try another calculation. What would happen if we had done our titration with a diprotic acid? A diprotic acid such as sulfuric acid, you'll notice in the formula, has a small subscript 2 after the hydrogen. Since sulfuric acid is a strong acid, it will dissociate completely in water to give us two hydrogen ions instead of one. So as we set up this titration, we will take our sulfuric acid, which has an unknown concentration, and we're going to measure out 25.0 milliliters of it and put it in an Erlenmeyer flask. Take a look at the chemical reaction for this neutralization when sulfuric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide. We create water molecules and we also create an aqueous solution of sodium sulfate. The difference with this chemical reaction compared to the last one is our coefficients are not all one. You will notice that we have a ratio of sulfuric acid to sodium hydroxide of one mole to two mole. This will be important when we do our factor label math. We're going to set up our titration in a similar manner. In the burette, we're going to put our standard solution of sodium hydroxide, which had a molarity of 0.37 molar. Like we said, in the flask, we're going to put 25.0 milliliters of sulfuric acid. And again, we do not know its concentration. That is the goal of this experiment. Let's begin adding sodium hydroxide to the sulfuric acid. The solution begins off as a clear solution because phenolphthalein, the indicator that we are using, remains clear when the pH is less than 8. As we add more sodium hydroxide, we get closer to the equivalence point. When we add one more drop of sodium hydroxide, we reach the end point and the solution of sulfuric acid now turns pink.
If we take the final volume of sodium hydroxide and subtract it from the initial reading of sodium hydroxide, we find out that the endpoint was reached after we had added a total of 14.2 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. This is the volume of base that was needed to neutralize our sulfuric acid. Now it's time to calculate the concentration of the sulfuric acid. On the left hand side we've written down everything we know about the sodium hydroxide. The standard solution of NaOH had a molarity of 0.37 molar. The volume of base that came out of the burette was 14.2 milliliters and that can easily be converted to liters. On the right hand side let's write down everything we know about the acid. Of course we don't know the concentration of the sulfuric acid. That is the purpose of this titration. We do know that we used 25 milliliters of sulfuric acid in the Erlenmeyer flask and a quick conversion tells us that that's equivalent to 0 0.025 liters. Let's begin our factor label math at this point in time. We're going to start off with the volume of sodium hydroxide that was needed for this neutralization. We used 0 0.0142 liters of sodium hydroxide. In the next step, let's use molarity as a conversion factor. We know that 0.37 molar can be written a different way. By definition, 0.37 molar is the same thing as 0.37 moles of sodium hydroxide dissolved in every one liter of sodium hydroxide solution. You will notice that the liters of sodium hydroxide cancel out and we're left with moles of NaOH. At this point in time, we want to figure out how many moles of sulfuric acid were in that Erlenmeyer flask. The coefficients from the balanced equation tell us the mole to mole ratio is one mole of sulfuric acid to two moles of NaOH. If we stop at this point in time, we now know that our moles of sulfuric acid that were in the Erlenmeyer flask were 0 0.00263 moles. Using the equation for molarity, molarity is the moles of solute divided by the liters of solution. Well, our moles of sulfuric acid were 0 0.00263. The volume of sulfuric acid from the Erlenmeyer flask was 0 0.025 liters. In this calculation, we find out that our unknown concentration of sulfuric acid is 0.11 molar. Again, once you become more advanced with this style of math, you realize that that factor label calculation could have continued. Rather than stopping at moles of sulfuric acid, why not take your moles of H2SO4 and multiply by 1 over 0 0.025 liters? Essentially, you are taking your moles divided by your liters of sulfuric acid, just like we did in white down below. When we complete this calculation, we get the same final answer, which is 0.11 molar sulfuric acid. So now we've done two examples of titration calculations. We figured out the concentration of the unknown acid in each calculation. This concludes our tutorial on titration calculations. Thanks again for joining us.